Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. Let's continue our discussion on mathematical miracles in the Quran as part of our series, Quran, Is It Really the Word of God? Today, we'll focus on the specific occurrence of the number 19 in the Quran and how it relates to our discussion on mathematical miracles in the Quran. Let's sit down with Dr. Shabir Ali. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So we're continuing our um, series on Quran, is it really the word of God, mathematical miracles, and today we're focusing on a particular, the number 19. Uh, now how does this relate to probability theory? Well, uh, th um, sometimes we see things falling into place and we say, okay, well, it just happened by coincidence. And uh, a lot of times that is exactly what it is, just a simple coincidence. Uh, but uh, what we know from probability theory is that, uh, yes, it, things may happen, uh, fall into place by coincidence, but uh, to to have a series of such coincidences is actually very rare. Uh, let's say, for example, I, I uh, flip a coin. Now I see the heads or tails coming up, right? Um, and the chance of it being heads is one half or 50% because there, there is one chance out of two possibilities. It's either heads or tails, and I'm looking for that one mm -hmm. uh, possibility uh, out of the two. Uh, now, to, to get heads twice in a row is actually uh, one half times one half, which is one quarter. Okay. In other words, one out of four, because if you keep, if you flip it two times, you can, there are four different outcomes which are possible and you need heads each time. So you need, you need actually one, you need one possibility out of the four that mm -hmm. could occur, uh, meaning both are, are heads. And if you do it three times in a row, the probability of getting heads on each uh, spin uh, is actually one out of eight now. So, so your, your chances, if mm -hmm. it's three times, now there are eight different outcomes which are possible, and you want one specific outcome that you have heads on each one of them. Uh, so the, the more you, you, you flip, the, the, the lesser a chance you have that you have your desired outcome. Now, if we, uh, that's with a coin where there are two possibilities, either head or tails, right? If you go to uh, use a, uh, a dice, which uh, use a die which has six faces, the probability of getting one particular face, let's say you want the number five for some reason. Most people like to get six, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, but, but let's say you wanted to get the number five for some reason. Now, to get that number five, you roll the, uh, the die, uh, the probability of getting that five is one out of six because there's six different outcomes mm -hmm. you can get, number one, two, three, all the way to six, but you want that specific one, it's one out of five, uh, one out of six. Uh, but if you want to get the five on two throws in a row, then now it is one out of 36, it's, uh, because now you, you, you have 36 different outcomes and you want five on each one of them. That's true. Okay, so um, th that's one specific outcome out of the 36, and if you want three throws and five on each one of them, it's one out of 216. Your math is really good. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've done this before. Yeah. So <laughs> the, uh, you see now the, the chance of getting your desired result is becoming slimmer and slimmer if you're doing a n number of them in a row. Uh, now, if we work, let's suppose we're working with a, with a die which it has uh, six faces, right? Imagine a die that has 19 faces. It's hard to imagine because to get them all yeah. even. Mm -hmm. um, it, but, but now, just to see the numbers. Uh, so to get the one desired number, if you're working with a die that has 19 faces, is one out of 19. And if you do it two times in a row, and you want to get the same number on each roll, then it's one out of 361. Which would be very times unlikely. 19. It's very, very, very mm -hmm. unlikely. Mm -hmm. So now, now we, we, we see that there are certain things in the Quran that uh, work out to either 19 or a, a multiple of 19. And to get one of these uh, numbers coming out like this, the, the probability of each one is one out of 19. And to get two in a row is like, one out of 361, 19 times 19. Uh, so this is very rare, and to find this in the Quran um, would indicate to us that uh, the divine hand is behind the Quran, 
And uh, it, it is God's mind who, who put the Quran to be the way it is. It's not by human invention. And who, someone obviously did this research, right, in this area of focus, so can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, the first person to come up with this uh, finding is a man by the name of Dr. Rashad Khalifa. He had lived in, um, in Arizona. Uh, in Tucson, and uh, he uh, was of Egyptian background, but he was an engineer, and he knew his way around computers. He fed the Quranic data into a computer program, and then he com uh, computed things. And he found that a lot of things came out uh, as products of 19. Uh, and uh, he, he exaggerated his claims. The, uh, later on, when people checked uh, some of his claims, they found that uh, sometimes the data seems to be fudged a little bit. Some things did not actually work out to 19 the way he said. Uh, plus, he made the exaggerated claims about himself. He said that he, uh, he is God's messenger for the current time to bring forth this information to the modern world. And uh, in, in Sunni Islam, it's not accepted that there will be another messenger after our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And so his uh, personal claims uh, were, um, were not accepted, and also some of his numbers were, were found to be incorrect. But when, when all of that dust of debate had settled, uh, some other students of the Quran continued to, to check and double check uh, the findings and come up with some findings on their own as well. And in the end, uh, we, we uh, have concluded that even though we reject uh, the claims of Rashad Khalifa himself, there are certain things about the Quran which are undeniable. This is about the book itself, and we don't reject the book. And we don't reject the obvious findings which are connected with, with the book. And what are some of the some of the examples? Well, the we Quran? find that uh, the Quran actually draws our attention to, to 19. Uh, in a verse of the Quran, in the 74th chapter, the 30th verse, uh, the Quran says, Alayha tis'ata ashar, over it are 19. And uh, within the context, what it means is that there were 19 angels guarding hell. So, so it's not so much about the number 19 itself uh, as, as a phenomenon in the Quran. It's just but talking it's about 19 angels mm -hmm. guarding hell. Uh, but uh, Rashad Khalifa took that to be 19 like as a pattern in the Quran. But uh, so we're not saying this means that there is a 19 pattern in the Quran. It means there are 19 angels guarding hell. But at the same time, it led somebody to think that there is a possibility of 19 being a mathematical system embedded in the Quran. And indeed, we are finding that, that 19 pops up in some very key places, which draw our attention to uh, the, the creator's involvement with the text. So I know you know more. So what are some of the other examples? So right here, up? where it says over at our 19, that's in the 30th verse, the very next verse, the 31st verse of that 74th surah, explains in detail why God made 19 angels to guard hell. And it says that this is or in order to uh, strengthen the faith of the believers and uh, even to give certainty to the people of the book who might be looking at the Quran. And uh, at the same time, this same phenomenon will cause people who want to doubt to say, well, you know, what does God mean by all of this, uh, to deride the information. Now, this verse, which goes into such great detail explaining the, the wisdom behind the 19 angels, actually comprises 57 words, which is 19 times 3. Oh, wow. Yes, and uh, which we, we know to be a rare phenomenon, that it's a product of 19. Then we, we go to, uh, to what preceded this, uh, this verse in this uh, surah, and, and we see that the first, 30th, uh, the first 30 verses uh, actually comprise uh, 57 words, uh, 95 words, which is 19 times 5. And the first 19 uh, verses comprise 57 words, which is 19 times 3. Mm. And, and what is even more uh, interesting is that, you know, the, the, the passage reads, and then we come to the mention of the word 19, so over it are 19. If we count all of the letters in the f from the beginning of that chapter all the way to the word 19, just before the word 19, there are 361 letters, which is 19 times 19. So it's as if we're counting the words and we're saying 19 times 1, 19 times 2, 19 times 3, 19 times 18, 19 times 19. Right on and the then dot right and that's there where it says mm -hmm. 19 in word, in a word. 
right? Wow. Uh, Tisata Asher, two words which make up the word 90 in, in, in Arabic. And do we know, is it, uh, like I guess within the context, obviously the number 19 is significant in this area. Are there other numbers as well, or I is this study focused on the number 19? Oh, well, well, uh, there are other numbers. We will see in a later um, episode, we'll have to leave it for a later mm -hmm. episode, that uh, there are um, things working out to multiples of seven as well. And seven is also mentioned in the Quran in a significant way. But sticking with 19 for the moment, there are other examples, if, if you of allow course, me, yes, and if time, time permits. Uh, the uh, this, the 72nd uh, chapter of the Quran um, is uh, uh, entitled Surat al-Jinn, and uh, that chapter comprises 285 words, uh, which is 19 times 15. Uh, the that uh, uh, chapter, um, if, if we look at the last word in, in each verse, those those last words uh, comprise 114 letters and 114 is the number of surahs in the entire Quran. Uh, the, uh, the, the first chapter of the Quran said to be revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, according to some Muslim traditions, is the 96th chapter. Uh, but not, uh, not the entire chapter, just the first five verses. And these first five verses uh, comprise 19 words. And if you count the letters, there are 76 letters, which is 19 times 4. Wow. And, and if we look at the entire chapter, that entire chapter comprises of uh, 285 letters, which is 19 times 15. And it so happens that that chapter comprises 19 verses. And it is the 19th chapter from the end of the, of the book. I've never, I mean, it, it's sort of very shocking because I've never really looked into this, but it is, that is Yeah, there's there so many coincidences that, um, you know, turn out to be 19, and it's too many to just say this is just a, a coincidence. Now, there are some surahs of the Quran that begin with what we call now mysterious letters. Mysterious because we don't know the meanings. We, we just know that they're there. They've, uh, as far back as we can trace, they were part of the Quran, and uh, they don't carry any meaning because it's like saying A, B, C. Maybe they name something, maybe it's like uh, an initial for somebody's name, or a company name or whatever, but in the Quran we don't know why these letters are there. Just like there, they don't form any words, they're just disjointed letters. There is one surah of the Quran that starts with the letter Q and only the letter Q. Uh, that's the equivalent, Qaf in Arabic. And, and the surah is actually named Surah Qaf, which is the 50th uh, chapter of the Quran. Now, it, it turns out that if we count the number of times this letter Qaf occurs within that chapter, uh, there are exactly 57 uh, occurrences of that letter cough, uh, which is 19 times 3. Um, now 57 you times throughout the Quran? Uh, throughout that particular oh, surah. That particular that surah. Oh, wow. Surah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, there, there is uh, another chapter that has this letter cough am amidst other letters. This is the 42nd chapter of the Quran, the Surah Ashura. Now, uh, it says, Ha mi ma'in sin cough. So it has the cough right in there. Uh, that surah as well has this letter cough occurring exactly 57 times in that surah, which is 19 times 3. Wow. Now, uh, some people said that cough uh, occurring at the beginning of the 50th chapter stands for Quran, because that's the letter that spells the word Quran. Uh, we can't be sure that that's the meaning, because we said the meaning is mysterious, we don't know. But if we think about this for a moment, there are 57 coughs in that surah and 57 in the other surah. The two together make up 114, which is the number of surahs in the entire Quran. And 114, by the way, is 19 times 6. So the number of chapters in the Quran is a product of 19. Now, the, the uh, beginning of the Quran is, as you know, the Basmalah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And uh, this uh, phrase, uh, which means in the name of God, the beneficent, the merciful one, comprises 19 letters. And theoretically, can be written with 22 letters. But uh, the tradition has it that it's been written with the 19, 19 letters, letters. Mm -hmm. all throughout our history. Yeah. But, but w when people first wrote it with 19 letters, they didn't say, let's write it with 19 letters. It just so happens that that's how they wrote it, using the writing conventions at the time. And it turns out now, because we have kept that convention, that uh, whereas modern convention would actually call for the writing of this with 22 letters, uh, this, this ancient convention, given at the time from, from the time Uthman wrote down the Quran, um, it's with the 19 letters. And this is how it appears right now in the Quran as well, in 19 it, with letters? With the 19 letters, yes. And this phrase itself, because it's found at the beginning of every surah, 
um, the natural uh, conclusion is that it occurs 114 times as well, except that the ninth chapter of the Quran does not have it for some mysterious reason. And various the ninth chapter? The ninth chapter, mm. which is called Surah Al-Bara'ah or Surah Al-Tawbah. It, it does not have the Basmalah written at, at the beginning like other surahs do. So now it looks like on, only 113. However, the 27th chapter of the Quran uh, does mention the Basmala in the midst of the surah itself. So that one surah has two of them, one at the beginning as to usual and yeah. one within. So, so that one within seems to compensate for the one which is not there at the beginning of Surah Al-Bara'ah and now we have 114 of them. Now, if we think about the distance between these two chapters, the one that does not have the basmala, as we would expect, and the other one that has the basmala in the midst of the surah, where we didn't expect it to be, we see that these two form a block of, uh, uh, of, of 19 surahs. Wow. Because from the 9th to the mm -hmm. 27th inclusive, there are 19 surahs. Very, very interesting, Dr. Pierce. So if anyone, I know, do we have um, somewhere where people can read this? Because it is very interesting information. Well, m we have a short document about this, which is put on our website. So we would invite our viewers to go there. Perfect. Very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Hey, YouTube. We hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.